G'day guys, welcome back. I'm going again with the Montmartre Clear Craft Glue. So if you saw my previous video, that was my first attempt using this with water. I did mix it at 60-40, 60, 60 glue, 40 water. It was a little bit thin. So I've increased the glue, I'm going 70-30. So 70% glue, 30% water, mixing it with Montmartre paint. That's it there, Studio Acrylic. So I've got two cups of the white. The Thalo Blue is this one here. And that one there is the Thalo Blue with, I think it's got like a touch of green and a touch of purple. I'll have to go and look back on my, my record, see what I did. The black, or well actually that's charcoal, it's just black with a bit of uh, white and I think I might have added just a touch of blue as well because sometimes it gets a green shade, depends on the base of the black. Uh, this one I made myself this morning, it's white with a little bit of raw sienna, a little bit of, where is it, burnt sienna, it must be burnt sienna with burnt umber and then just a little drop of black, so it's a lovely sort of a creamy top colour. Um, I'll see if I can show you the consistency of this before I put my oil in. So it's a little bit thicker than I would use when I'm doing my Elmer's glue. Hopefully you can see that. It's not too dark. See the little mound? Don't hold your stick way up here because it's going to be different. Just hold the bottom of the stick at the top of the cup. Hopefully you can see that. One, two, three, and the ribbon's gone. One, two, three. Hopefully you can see it. Anyway, so that's the that's the consistency. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, a little bit thicker than I would do with the Elmer's glue all. Righto, let's put our silicone in. Two drops in each. I won't do the white because there'll be plenty of selling happening. Um, hopefully we won't get as much of a reaction this time because I got a lot of a lot of cells and a bit overstretched and all that kind of thing because my mix was a little bit on the thin side. <clears throat> so you can see the difference with this pour once I, I pour it out. You should hopefully be able to see the difference in the way the paint moves and the shape of the cells with a slightly thicker mix. This one still feels a little bit thick and I'm going to go with it. It's fine. They're never all going to be identical. You know, you'll get them as close as you can. It's funny, you know, even though the consistency, like the mound might look the same, once you pour the paint out, it reacts differently. Like this paint reacts a lot like the um, global glue, craft glue. Whereas it looks nice and moundy, leaves a mound, but then uh, once it, you start tilting, it doesn't seem to hold its shape. The cells, they don't seem to hold their shape as much as the glue also. I don't know if that's just got something to do with the actual glue itself or, or what, must be. So this glue is similar, acts similar to the global glue. And also the Elmer's School Glue. They all do the same. The Elmer's Glue All is the only one that I've found that you can mix a little bit thinner and it still holds the cell shape. So it must have something to do with the actual glue formula. Who knows? This takes a little bit of experimenting. So, you know, pick your glue, what you want to use, and just experiment with it with your paints. Because you might not be using the same brand as what I'm using. So it just takes a little bit of experimenting. I've been doing this for three years. It took me a long time to be able to get pretty cells. I started with Floetrol and paint. And um, I thought my cells were just wonderful. Until I started using glue and water and then realised, wow, what a difference different pouring medium can make to your cells the glue just holds those cells beautifully in place you can see this is thicker it's sitting on top nicely got a nice layer it's a little bit 
be interesting to see if it works, hey? Because a lot of people can't get the Elmer's glue all, or it's quite expensive to bring into Australia. Although Spotlight do sell it now in Australia, but I think it's only in the little bottles still. So if this one works, uh, then <clears throat> those Aussies might be able to use that, or even uh, other countries, because Mott Mart is sold worldwide. You just have to look on their website, um, and it'll tell you where the stockists are. And even if you don't have one in your area, I'm sure you'll be able to order online and they can post it out for you. I do find them to be a lovely creamy paint and I don't have any splitting. Actually, I do have one little issue with it. It's the black. I don't know why, but uh, the black kind of I don't know, it doesn't hold the cells properly. It kind of makes little dendrites, that sort of a thing. A little bit of feathering. So I don't know what, what it is about the black that does that. So that's the only real issue I have with the Mark, Mark paints. Is the, the black kind of giving little bullets or the little feathering dendrite type things. Yeah, they're just not beautiful clear cells like the other colours make. But uh, apparently the black is an opaque, but it must have something in it that's doing that. So I don't know if there's anyone from Montmartre watching. Can you um, look into why your black acts differently to the other colours? That would be much appreciated. Running out of white. My little end cup always has less paint. So did everyone have a lovely new year? Did you go partying? I'm not much a party girl myself. <laughs> More so in my young years, but not anymore. I'm quite happy just to curl up on the couch and watch a movie with my doggies. I did go out. I went to some friend's place for New Year's Eve. We had dinner and sat outside and watched a little bit of the fireworks, had some drinks, just a low key sort of a, a night. I'm looking forward to 2020, seeing what that can bring. Some new challenges perhaps, definitely lots of pause. Okay, let's put these away. And flip over and you can see already with my flipping that you know not as much is splashing out so hopefully my well I know my consistency is thicker this time hopefully it'll be good I really like these colors I will show you the other one that I did just before this one um, it's just over there on my shelves it's still soaking wet because I only did it like half an hour ago but um, I will show you later on what the difference is. Okay, let's do this. Now, when I flipped the other cups, it kind of went over the side and they blended a lot. Uh, hopefully, they'll sort of stay more in their, their shape that I've, I've flipped them over if it's a little bit thicker. And it is. coming out slower. The colours seem to be more sort of separated as well because they're a bit thicker. So they are staying a little bit more separated, which is nice. They're not blending as much. Still getting some cells popping up here and there. All right, let's do this. Okay, so it's moving better. More what I'm used to. At the thicker mix, the 70-30. With the Elmer's glue oil, I use 60-40. 
I'm just going to do that. I don't want to lose too much paint just yet. I'm going to torch first because I like having the really thick amount of paint on the surface there before I torch because then I can get lots of multicolored cells coming up through all that thick paint. If you've got really thin paint on your surface, uh, the oil hasn't got much paint to come through, has it? A little thin layer, so it's only going to bring through a little bit of other colors and cells. Right, let me get my little torch out. Um, actually, I'm just going to bring the weight of the paint back to the middle a little bit. Just like that. And then I'll torch. Clean off my hands before I touch my torch. Not that it makes a difference. Look how filthy it is anyway. Okay, let's go. Minimal torching woman. And I always say that and I don't often do it though. Maybe that can be, oh look at that, heaps. Maybe that can be a New Year's resolution. I am trying to torch minimally and up high. I really am. Thicker mix, I'm getting a couple of caterpillars from the thicker mix. It does happen with the when I have my mix a little bit thicker, I've noticed. Okay, leave it like that. See, the cells at the moment are much smaller than they were with the previous pour. And that's because the, the mix is thicker. So the cells come up and there's, the paint's thicker, so there's a lot more resistance on them. They can't really move all that much. So if your cells are coming up and they're huge, it's because your mix is too thick. So they pop up and they've got lots of space to play. I'll keep that little cluster there if I can, because it's really pretty. Although, now we're going to get that corner off. Without, oh, actually, let me torch again over here because I'm going to lose that side by the looks of it when I tilt. All right, so I've got a few more little guys up there. For me, personally, I would prefer smaller cells that are really pretty. Mm, maybe I'll leave that corner. I really like those. I'll leave a little bit because I like these cells here and I like those there. So I'll leave those for now. I can change my mind later and torch it, uh, tilt again. I'm going to go with a little bit of cells there, just on the edges. Just a few there and there in that blank area. Cells are looking really pretty, hey? Um, yeah, I do prefer, if I have a choice, I prefer smaller cells that are a better shape than big cells that are all kind of lopsided and bumping into each other. Now I'm just going to go really slowly, take my time because this is really, really pretty. Get a little bit more paint off, maybe over here because this is quite a dark corner. Not all of it though, I'll keep a little bit of that dark corner. Keep a little bit of the dark corner on the other side as well. Now there's a few caterpillars happening over here because when your mix is quite thick and you get close with the torch, they do just spring up. 
they do. So let's get rid of a couple of those. I've still got a, a couple left, but I'm not going to worry about them too much. They're actually quite pretty. That's what happens when you, you've, your mix is on the thicker side and um, you torch a little bit closer. I don't know the science behind it. I don't know why that happens. I just know that it happens for me anyway. Now there's a little dark spot just there that I would like some little cells to pop up and over here as well. Just a few little baby ones to pop up. A little few more just there. Whoops. Whoops. Just a couple. All right. That is really, really pretty. Wow. <laughs> See where I torched there? I got a little bit close because I, I was only trying to get that little area there, you see. So that's why I went a little bit closer to aim into that section there and that's why I got that caterpillar. Whereas if you're just doing a broad torching over the whole thing, you're not going to get them. But as soon as I went in to aim for that little area there and did that, that's when I got them. So anyway, that's how they happen for me. And you can see how this is flowing much slower and I don't have with the last painting I had the paint that kind of went like this and I couldn't move that middle section that's because the mix was too thin but now because it's relatively thick it's um it's spreading beautifully I'm just gonna see if I can open up these little guys a little bit more I don't want to ruin it. I'm trying, trying to get that caterpillar off, but I don't think that's going to happen. I should just quit while I'm ahead. Just opening up a few of those little cells that I've just got. All right. So what I do now is I look up here and see the size of these ones. I look up down here and see the size of these ones and make sure they're all relatively equal. All right, I'm calling that done. Can't really see very much of my beige, my torpy colour, can you? It kind of got eaten up. I did put it next to the, got my hands, I did put it next to the black. Um, and because the mix was a little bit thicker this time, the black kind of ate it up. But, um... It's still in there a little bit. Just fix these corners and then I'll take you down. Actually, I should show you the other one. I'll zoom you in first and then I'll show you the one from earlier today with Thinamix. And uh, you will definitely be able to see the difference. Some of you actually may prefer the thinner mix because the cells are bigger, but they're not all that round. They're kind of a bit wobbly. Um, I've got lots of cells there. Whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing, or, oh, I don't know. But there's lots of cells there. All right, let me show you this other one. Uh, I was going to zoom you in first, wasn't I? Let me zoom you in. And I've got paint all over my hands. Let's see if I can zoom with paint in my hands. On my hands. Okay, so that's the that's the thicker mix. Love it. So this glue seemed to work really well. So thanks for the idea for this glue, Jilly Cube. All right, there's the other one. Can you see the difference? Smaller cells on the thicker mix, bigger cells on the thinner mix. Um, and they're kind of a little bit wonky and wobbly and bumping into each other. See these ones, the cells have actually got, most of them have got space around each cell to be an individual cell. Whereas these ones, especially in the middle, they're all kind of bumping into each other. 
So that's the difference. I'm just going to put this one back. Slide it on. Just clean my hands again. I'm running out of cloths. I've got three damp cloths here. I think they're all covered in paint. Just wipe it on my scrubs. I wear hospital scrubs that I bought from eBay so I don't ruin all my clothes. It's so pretty, you guys. I love this one. <gasps> love, love, love it. All right, let's go down. Zoom out a little bitty. So you can see the top and the, the grey or car, um, charcoal together have kind of made that brownish look. It's showing a little bit darker, a lighter than it, it usually it is actually. Um, but look at the white around my cells. A nice combination. There's some little baby cells that I torched up afterwards, and they're white and they've got the light blue center. And then over there, I know there's a weird shaped caterpillar there. Uh, what are you going to do? Don't torch so close. That's what you're going to do, and you won't get the caterpillars. Easy. Yeah, you say easy, but it's not. You just move like half a centimeter too close and Bam, there they are, and you've over-torched. So there you go, really happy with it. It's my favorite section there, those white uh, rings around the pale blue cells. And there we go, that's from my, my perspective, my side. What do you think? So pretty happy with that glue for those of you that can't get uh, Elmer's glue all. Maybe you can have a go at the Montmartre clear craft glue. Seems to work just as well, but you will have to thicken it up. So if you're using Montmartre, 70% glue, 30% water, and then equal amounts of that pouring medium to paint and then you'll get this effect <laughs> you will you will you just have to make sure you got enough paint on the surface if you don't have enough paint you'll be just stretching everything to cover your edges so make sure you have enough paint this is a 30 by 40 centimeter canvas and you will need between 600 and 700 grams of mixed paint that's 20 at least 20 ounces okay so but you guys can do it this takes a bit of practice all right, thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.